morning, brethren. This morning, we have come together to devote our minds to the word of the Lord, to the word of God. And so I wanted to begin by sharing some of the things that the scripture talks about concerning the word of the Lord and what he says about it. Now, first of all, we know that the whole world, all the worlds, were framed by the word of God. We, we know this by faith. He has established his word since the very beginning of time. He's settled it in heaven. His word is settled in heaven, which means it will not change, but it is very sure. It's steadfast. He says that he hastens to perform his word and that it is verified and confirmed. So this is the word that we are coming to consider this morning. Now, since the very beginning, when the Lord framed the worlds with his word, he's been speaking ever since then. In the garden, he was able to speak directly with Adam and Eve. But then after the fall, the Lord chose representatives that he could speak to. And then those were the ones who would show forth his word to the rest of the people. We know that Moses and Samuel were such as these, as well as all of the prophets that the Lord spoke directly to. And then the people had to go to this one to know what the word of the Lord was. <clears throat> there were individuals who were trustworthy with the word of God, such as these that were entrusted with it. They were trustworthy because they loved it. They sought the Lord out so that they could hear the word from him. They responded to it worthily and they handled it rightly. They kept it and delivered it just as they were instructed. So as a result, those were the ones that were profited to be messengers to handle this word of God. But even as those who were trustworthy, we know that there were also those who were not, those who did not regard his word. It was not valuable to them, and they despised it. They did not keep it. And that's a grief to consider that there are still those today. But, brethren, we are not in this number. We have come together this morning because we do trust in his word. We want to receive it. We want to keep it. The scripture says we have hoped in his word. And it is the joy and rejoicing of our heart. It is engrafted into us and it abides in us. So we continue in it because it's precious to us. Amen. Now all of the prophets that were chosen before as representatives to give the word, to show the word into the people, we know that these were all just shadows leading up to the person of Christ. Christ is the word of God to whom every man goes to, to receive the word, to see what it is, what the Lord has said. Hebrews 1, 1 and, uh, 2 and 3. He has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So this word of God is who is speaking now to us, who that we receive the word from. Now we receive it because each one of us has sat with the Savior and received the word of God. Then we can come together then and share what we have heard. We speak it forth. We're able to enlarge upon it. So what does the Lord say about his word? In the scriptures, he says it is good. The, the word of the Lord is good. God himself is good, so anything that proceeds forth from him will also be good, even his expression in word. Amen. The word of the Lord is very pure, very clean. It's whole. It is perfect. It's also potent and rich. The word of the Lord is right. There's no denying that it is all truth, what the Lord speaks. His word is also tried and proven. It is faithful and reliable. It's strong. It's worthy of our trust because it's been proven already to be truth. It's true. The word of the Lord is with power. Whenever the Almighty, who is all-powerful, speaks, his power accompanies his word, but it's for the end of accomplishing his purpose in the midst of the earth. We know that not a word will return to him void, but it will accomplish that for which it is sent. The word of the Lord is healing. It can bind up and mend, soothe and make whole. It's living and active, so it carries life with it, ready to impart to the good soil of men's hearts. Quickening, the word of the Lord is quickening. It enlivens us and revives, empowers, it awakens and renews us. The word of the Lord is cleansing. It washes us from defiling influences and refreshes our weariness. Amen. It also leads. Thy word is a lamp and a light into my path. It shows our feet, the path that is ahead that the Lord desires us to walk in. 
The word of the Lord will not fail, but it stands forever. It endures forever. And it is also this word that increases and grows. The scriptures talk about the word multiplying. So this, brethren, is the word that man lives by. We have come together this morning to feed upon this word, to break it open, to hear it and to speak one another to one another of it, to pray using this word that he has given to us. We seek to understand more and to gather more of it this morning. So, brethren, I would encourage you, hear the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Have your hearts to be ready. Let us be as those by the lake of Gennesaret who pressed upon Jesus to hear and receive the word of God. And then when we hear, let us with joy keep it. Remember, there was a blessing that Jesus spoke to those who would not only hear, but keep the word that was spoken to them. So that's how we'll enter into our morning this morning. We'll commit Brother Mike and our class time to the Lord.